and welcome to Clementine Made Me Do It. Whew, has it been a while. I kind of lost my sewing mojo after the holiday season. I think the uh, mad dash to get all of the niece and nephew holiday sewing done just kind of pushed me over the edge. My name is Sarah. Thank you so much for joining me. I have this... Um, I'm just trying to pull up some stuff here. I have this uh, vlog as a compliment to my fiber vlog that I do uh, so I can talk about my sewing and um, it can just be a bit easier for people to target the topic that they're interested in without having to watch an entire episode on fiber or an entire episode on sewing. So I thought I would just give you the down and dirty of what's been happening and talk a little bit about my inspiration. It is the first day of spring and that's, I think, part of this, like, reinvigoration of let's make some clothes. And, yeah, I mean, I went, like, all out crazy, like, I'm going to do this, and I'm making lists and sorting out patterns. And so, um, so let's just get started with what I've been working on, uh, which is going to be so not inspiring. Um, first, let me bring up... Uh, this pattern so I can give you the name. This is an apron that I've been working on and just about to finish it. I just got my sewing machine back. This is part of my problem is that the, my sewing machine was having difficulty and primarily the problem was buttonholing and I got really frustrated because I just couldn't be finishing garments the way that I wanted to. So I took it to my local sewing machine shop and ho ho! They fixed her up beautiful. She got a full tune-up. The guy was like, have you ever had this service? And I was like, no. He's like, well, you're lucky. Um, so it was looking pretty good, and my buttonholer is working. So I'm wicked excited. I feel like everything can move forward now, and there's nothing in my way. Um, and so... Part of the, where I got stymied was I was working on this pair of pajamas for my friend's son. These are the sleepover pajamas by Oliver and S. And this is the 7 to 12 year old um, sizing. Um, and of course, as you can see, this is Star Wars. Um, but I had to buttonhole this. And I didn't want to do it. It was going to ruin it. And everything else came out so wonderfully. Um, I'm really chuffed with the uh, collar lines and the stitching that's happened here. Um, I'm super excited about um, how I was able to line up the cuffs on these trousers so that everybody is facing the right way and it's one repeat. Um, so that was like a huge coup and I was like, I don't want to ruin this for because of my stupid buttonholer, and I didn't want to do buttonholes by hand. And I got to the point where I was going to just sew snaps with buttons on top. And when I took it to the sewing machine place, they were like, well, we can fix this. And I was like, oh, great. So, um, so I just need to put in the elastic on the pants, but you can see the bottoms, the Millennium Falcon. I'll try not to nerd out about Star Wars. I have enough of this fabric and the fabric with the faces on it to do myself um, a top. <laughs> Actually, I have enough to do two tunics, which I probably will do um, because I teach in an elementary school and a junior high and, and a high school, so I think it'll win some favor. So anyway, um, Oliver and S, this is the sleepover pajama. It's in the seven to 12 size. It was a PDF download. It was the first time I had pieced together a pattern. It wasn't as intimidating as I thought it was going to be. It was like hemmed and hot over that. I can't remember if I complained about that on my last episode or not. But, um, yeah. So, anyway, those are done. I'm going to buttonhole those up tonight. Super excited. I've also been, this is the Emmeline apron by So Liberated. And I forgot, I put the kettle on when I started this, so I may need to leap up and uh, grab my tea. This is a reversible apron. And you can see the front is kind of ruched. There's this kind of space in here. Um, and then this is the reverse side. 
I will maybe get a shot. I got a dress for him for Christmas and it finally arrived like at the end of the beginning of March. So I will see if I can get a shot of this apron and insert it in here and you can take a see what it looks like. Um, Um, I really love the heft of this material because it's um, the finishing, there are no finished seams, everything you kind of turn it right inside out and it's this beautiful yoke. Um, the straps all came out beautifully. Um, I'm really happy with the way it looks. Um, you know, sometimes I think my work is a little bit shoddy because I just don't, I'm not a big finesser, but this made it easy. To, to look good. Hold on, I'm just going to get my teeth. So as I was saying, i not big on the finessing, and so I just liked that this had everything was uh, instructed. It was, in, the, the pattern was instructive and designed so that you could come out looking pretty good. And uh, I had to do all hand finishing on these sides here. So this is all blind stitched here and blind stitch here um, and then she does suggest in the pattern that the straps um, and you can see they're still pinned she suggests blind stitching these straps together but I think I'm just gonna run that through the sewing machine and call it good so Emmeline apron by so liberated and I think this pattern is a Bonnie name eludes me. I picked all of this fabric up at Clementine's in Rockland, Maine, and I really, I loved both of them, and I was trying to find a way to use them, and, because I love these boats, um, and she's like, oh, well, the Emmeline apron, which I had planned to make, is, um, it's, it's reversible, and I love the yellow and the gold, the, the blue and the gold together, and so, yeah, so hopefully I can get a picture of that on my dress form, ho ho, who's professional now, and uh, you guys can take a look at what that shape is. So yesterday I spent the day ironing fabric, and I plan to make some Anne Carolyn tunics. I love those. They, I just find myself reaching for my Anne Carolyn tunic almost every day, and I like that you put a cardigan over it, I like the shape of it, and so there's a tunic and there's a dress and there's a shirt length. So I, I think I'm going to do, um, oh, get these all, I'm going to do a tunic out of this, <laughs> make it work, here we go. So that'll be a full on tunic with sleeves. And I have two yards of that, or two and a half yards of that, I think. And I've got two yards of this fox print, which I love. And I can't decide if I'm going to do, <laughs> sorry, Ugh. I can't decide if I'm going to do a shirt, which I think I might, out of this, which is a Dear Stella pattern, or if I might do an Alabama Channon, the, the fitted top that I did. I'm actually wearing it right now. Uh, I don't know if I talked about it, but it's designed for, for a knit fabric, and I did it out of a woven. It's a little bit tight, but I can get it over everything. And I just really like the shape of it, and I like that there's a skirt. And I'm sorry, I don't have a picture to show you. But I can't decide if I'm going to make this an Ann Carolyn shirt, or I think I might end up doing an Ann Carolyn shirt. Um, because the print is so large. I don't know yet. So anyway, this is going to be something for the summer. And let's see. I got this all ironed and now I'm mussing it up. And then I got these mittens for Nan and Carolyn. And I got this, which I think is going to end up being another Ann Carolyn too. So that's kind of what's on my docket right now, what I'm going to be able to cut out. I really bought this because I love where the owl down here. 
So these are all quilting cottons. Um, the one I just showed you, that blue, is um, the Henry Studio, Macauer UK. It's a Heartwood Scenic. The mittens are Dear Stella, which is Ray Ricci for Dear Stella. I got these out at Hawthorne Threads. The fox was uh, Tula Pink, and it was the uh, Chipper by Tula Pink. And I can refold that. This one I don't want to have to refold because... I'm talking to myself. This is Blythe, um, and the designer is Katerina Rochella. Now, this does come in a knit. She has another beautiful print that comes in a knit. I think I want to pick that up. So I almost bought this in a knit, too, but I was like, do the owls in the knit and do the, the stags in the um, cotton. So that's what's on the docket. I am in the process of planning a full Alabama Channon reverse applique dress. I happened to pick the book up the other night. Alabama Channon is a designer um, in Alabama, actually Natalie Channon, and her stuff is just stunning and it includes a lot of handwork and applique and reverse applique. Um, her fabric that she's designed as 100% American cotton and it's milled in the United States and it's it's just a really thoughtful piece. So anyway, I've been researching out stenciling and and for me, I know the fabric that I want to use um, and then doing all the stencil work, all I really need to do is get the mylar and the stencil paint, the fabric paint. I can print out, I've got access to her um, design stencils, I can print those out and I just have to cut it and do it. So I feel like it's an attainable goal. I've been talking about that for a while, I've been talking about making jeans for a while, so that's made it back onto my agenda. So Anne Carolyn Smocks, jeans, Alabama Shannon, and I am working on a, some wardrobe, a capsule wardrobe, with my friend Janie Estelle of Starcroft Fiber. And I hope to be um, making some purchases for spring and summer from Clementine in the near future. So it's wonderful to be back sewing. I'm happy to have my machine back and fully up and running. And I will put together a picture of that apron so you can see it. Oh, the only other thing I have left to tell you about is I have been doing some handwork. I forgot about this. So I have a couple embroidery books. One is right here. This is Zaka Embroidery by Yumiko Higuchi. I, sorry about that stumbling, obviously. That didn't want to just roll off my tongue. Um, I decided to do a test because I thought it would be fun. I have a Anne Carolyn smock by um, Ellen Mason um, out of this. This is a linen um, cotton blend. I thought it would be fun to do some embroidery on it. And you can see I'm using Super Solvy here and I trace the pattern onto that and I'm stitching over it. And this is how it's coming out, which doesn't look too terrible, huh? So I'm really happy with the way that it looks. I'm gonna keep going and finish it um, the Super Solve dissolves in water, so you just put it in water and it goes away, and then see what I can do with the um, some decorative embroidery work on some of my tunics. So I'll keep you posted on that. Right. That's a bit of a crazy what? podcast, but um, I think I've got a lot of energy for wardrobing, and if you're interested in my, knit in my knitting and spinning, you can check out the Fiber Trek podcast on the same channel. Um, but in the meantime, I hope to be back soon, um, hopefully with lots of makes, but I hope you're enjoying spring and I hope that uh, you've got lots of fun plans for your own making and your own creativity. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.